welcome. Scott here. Here is a quick boss guide for the upcoming raid event, Advent of the Dragon King Bahamut Raid. This event marks the debut of FR Echo. The event synergy units are Garnet, Lice, Echo, Terra, Bash, and Waka. Garnet FR will be making its debut. Garnet will be getting her rework. Both Garnet and Terra will be getting their FR Echo boards. We will be fighting the Bahamut which has 200 million HP. Throughout the fight, the Bahamut will be accompanied by two Dragon Star Crystals which has 25 million HP each. The turn requirement is 65. The HP requirements is 10,000. Before I continue further, here is a small disclaimer clause for the video. The guide is written based on the time that the event was released for the Japanese version. Please do note that it is possible that the boss fight mechanics might differ when the actual event is released in global. Like most other Shinryu fights, the boss gains increased brave damage and gain resistances at start of the fight and 79% HP threshold. Bringing a support like Luna Freya, Sherlata, Aerith, Ramza, Yuna, Iroha, Pernello, Garnet, or Selfa that grants damage boosting aura will make your fight easier. As the boss gains substantial boost to their defenses with the auras, it is important to inflict debuffs that lower their defenses. On the screen I have list down the key utility that you can consider when forming your party for this fight. When the Bahamut HP is between 100% to 70% and 39% to 0%, the Bahamut will adopt a defensive posture that makes its gain resistances to non-elemental and non-magic damage. It also frame the Bahamut's turn, making it immune to delay and turn deletion. The Bahamut has a basic attack, homing ray which is a guaranteed hit reset break status AOE brave plus HP. It is a very dangerous attack if it breaks your party. At certain HP threshold, the Bahamut will unleash Mega Flare Plus Plus which is a guaranteed hit, AOE Brave Plus HP that delays your entire party by two turns. At the certain HP thresholds, the Bahamut will instruct the two Dragon Star Crystals to self-destruct. The type of destruction damage depends on the current HP that Dragon Star Crystal has. Now you have a brief overview of the fight. Let's discuss on the utility that you needed. Firstly, as you need to constant deal AoE HP damage, you can make use of AoE magic damage dealers like Terra, Garnet, Strago, Emperor, Renoa, Yuna, Lunafreya, or Kuja. Garnet, Lunafreya, and Kuja are party enchanters so you can also bring non-elemental or non-magic units to the fight. As there are lots of AoE threshold attacks, you need to use two forms of damage mitigation utility. The first one is Brave and HP Damage Mitigation. Beatrix, Warrior of Light, Bash, and Desh works well for this purpose. Desh is also a valuable enchanter as well. To minimize damage, you need to reduce Brave damage received which can be assisted using Brave Control utility like Freeze or HP Silence or debuffs that Freeze Brave gains. Examples are Setzer, Arcila, Waka, and Maria. As the boss has a huge pool of HP and constant AoE HP attacks, off-turn units like counter and trap units are valuable here. Counter attackers like Orin, Golov, Gladio, and Kor works well. The Dragoons, Kane and Freya are great for handling the threshold Mega Flare attacks. Units with traps that heals also works well here like Minwyo, Celis, or Leon. If you are afraid of not able to surviving the HP attacks, you can bring Aiko or use her as a LDCA as an emergency call. Overall, this fight can be a bit challenging for those who has a limited roster. Bash or the upcoming FR unit Warrior of Light will make the fight a non-issue with the latter able to solo the entire fight if he is fully kit. Just be mindful attention is needed on the timing of your burst phase and monitoring the Dragon Star Crystal's HP. You won't want to trigger those thresholds attacks back to back without any damage mitigation. As we are no longer have Lufania plus fights, the boss guide will be focused primarily on Shinryu fights. In Shinryu, you need to understand the effects gained by the boss as the force gauge build up, its force ability and its force time effect. If you don't bring any force chargers, it is highly certain that the boss force gauge will build up faster than yours. 
To have a better understanding on the basics of the force gauge mechanics and Shinryu fights, I have done a video explaining the mechanics. I have included the link to the video under the comments and video description for your quick reference. When the force gauge is at 10% and above, the boss party will gain auras that raises their attack by 50%. When the force gauge is at 30% and above, the boss party brave does not drop below 5% of their respective max brave. In other words, they gain a brave floor that prevents them from getting broken. When the force gauge is at 60% or more, the boss party will gain brave damage up by 50%. The boss force gauge will build up faster as its HP is lowered. You can refer to the table on the screen for the percentages. At the 100% threshold, the Bahamut boss will use its force ability, Mega Flare. The boss force ability, Mega Flare is a reset break status, AoE HP attack that reduces your party HP to 1% of their current HP. Upon using the force ability, the boss will enter into its force time where the gauge will start to emit a red hue with a counter of 6 on its gauge. When the force time is activated, the boss will gain the following enhancements. They will apply a max brave down or a field that reduces your party max brave by 200%. All your party brave gain and brave damage dealt will be reduced by 50%. As the effect will limit your offensive capabilities a lot, it is highly recommended you have means to cancel or prevent the boss from using its force ability. To deal force weakness on the boss, you need to use a force ability that deals thunder and water damage. Doing so will cancel the enemy's force time. Garnet FR will meet the condition. Any non-elemental FR like Terra FR that is enchanted by Garnet will also meet the condition. Alternatively, you can bring in Thunder Enchanter and enchant the non-elemental unit with Redia LDCA. Now let's go through the fight threshold mechanics. Bahamut will start the fight by entering into its defensive posture phase at the start of the fight. The defensive posture lasts from 100% to 70% and 39% to 0% HP threshold. It will temporarily deactivate it at the 69% HP thresholds. You can tell that boss is in the defensive posture if the CTV gauge is framed. When the defensive posture is taken, the Bahamut boss will gain the following resistances. 1 it will gain 90% brave damage resistance against non-elemental attacks. 2. It will resist both ranged and melee weapon types. 3. It will become immune to turn deletion and delay from breaks. If you are bringing non-magic and non-elemental units, make sure you bring a party enchanter. Elemental enchant and imperil is the most common means to bypass the resistances. You can also bypass the Brave Resistance with special mechanics like Share Lotta BT Aura, Kate Sith LD or abusing Brave Cap Damage or Rainbow. At the 69%, 49% and 29% HP threshold, Bahamut will use Mega Flare Plus Plus. It is a reset break status, followed by a guaranteed hit AoE Brave Plus HP. The attack will delay all targets by 2 turns. It will also buff the entire party with 50% brave damage up and 50% attack up for 5 turns. As the boss will gains consecutive turns after the attack, make sure you have means to counter the brave gains or mitigate the damage. Take the attacks back to back could easily foil your run. When Bahamut's HP threshold reaches 39% and 9% HP threshold, you will be receiving a warning message called Dragon Star gaining power. Following that, the Dragon Star will use Self Destruct to destroy themselves and unleash an AoE HP attack. The variant of the destruction technique will depend on the Dragonster's current HP when they uses the attack. When its HP is below 50%, the Dragon Star will use Self Destruct which is a Brave Gain, followed by an AoE HP attack. The Brave Gain scales off 100% of the crystal's initial Brave. When its HP is at 50% and above, the Dragon Star will use Self Destruct Plus which is a guaranteed hit, Brave Gain followed by an AoE HP attack. The Brave Gain scale off 100% of the Crystal Max Brave. Due to the high potencies, this attack will most likely KO your party without damage mitigation. 
you probably need to use a ld revival technique to survive the attack or bringing a party with last stand passive. If there are no crystals alive when the boss activates the dragon star gaining power, you won't encounter the self-destruct mechanic attacks. So just make sure that the crystals are either dead or their HP is below 50% when you are going to reach the thresholds. As there are two types of enemies, let's discuss on a bit on the basic mechanics. Other than the threshold attacks, the Bahamut has three general attacks. Do note that the Bahamut will hit pretty hard when its force gauge is above 50%. Without any damage or brave damage mitigation, don't be surprised if your party member gets wiped out by its attacks. When its brave is high, it will use dive, a single melee HP attack. Mostly it will spam this when the brave Regan buff is active. Its dragon tail is a single melee brave attack that have very high potencies. The most dangerous generic move is its homing ray. You will know that it is coming when the Bahamut is targeting all. Homing ray is a reset break status, guaranteed hit AOE brave plus HP attack. Now let's focus on its partner in crime. The Dragon Star has 25 million HP each and they are immune to launches. They will constantly use Vigor Plus or Vigor depending on its Brave condition. Vigor Plus is a single target Brave attack and grants the party 30% initial Brave Regan buff for 5 turns. It could unleash HP attacks when its Brave is hot. The Bahamut can resummon them when both Dragon Star are dead with the Summon Dragon Star command. Before I proceed to the last slide of the guide, let me provide you some tips on how to handle the fight. As the fight features a lot of guaranteed hit threshold attacks, damage mitigation debuff calls like Ragen or Reno or damage mitigation utility like Warrior of Light Shields, Beatrix Holy Knight Safeguard or Bash's damage redirection mechanics are very useful to tank the attacks. To lower the damage, Brave Control utility like Sap, Poison, or Freeze are also useful here. Setzer is a great call for this. As an insurance policy, you can slot in one of your call slots with Echo LDCA or bring Echo to tank those attacks with her Rebirth Phoenix. The Mega Flare Plus Plus won't trigger during your summon phase or burst phase. But Bahamut will use them once you have exited the phase. Do note that Bahamut will trigger the Mega Flare Plus Plus back to back if you pass multiple thresholds while in your burst or summon phase. In another words, if you want to unleash your burst phase, it is preferably you can kill off the boss with your burst phase. As the HP requirements is only 10,000, have a burst heal call like Rem, Purim, or Sidor will help a lot. Keep in check on the Dragon Star HP when you are approaching 39% and 9% HP threshold of the Bahamut, you won't want those crystals unleash the plus variant of self-destruct attacks. Before I end the guide, let's cover a bit on the featured FR unit. Our global first BT unit, Garnet is returning with a good rework. Her BT aura is still one of the best support auras that is available. Together with Tira, she is great for those starting afresh or new to the game as well. Now let's briefly go through the force condition. 1. Use a thunder or water ability on the character turns will allow you meet 30% HP damage bonus. Garnet enchant both elements, so any non-elemental unit will meet the condition or you form a party that consists of water and thunder elements. 2. Recovers other allies brave will gain 20% HP damage bonus. Garnet will gain 40% HP damage bonus for this condition. Garnet herself won't have problem in meeting this condition however you need to bring members who can battery party with their attacks and avoid units that rely solely on brave damage if you intend to use Garnet's FR phase. Supercharging strategy will uptick the HP bonus condition by 70% per turn. Most of supercharger units like Pernello, Aerith, Hope and Yuna won't have difficulty in meeting this condition. Although it is an average FR to be used on its own FR phase, most players will use Garnet FR as an Echo FR attack, in other uses her FR as an attack in another unit's FR phase. Most of the veteran players will most probably have already built Garnet because her great BT auras. 
so it is a no-brainer to build her FR Echo if you get the weapon since you will most probably bring her as your party main support unit for the fight unless you are planning to save those precious enhancement points for an upcoming unit. With this, I have come to the end of my boss guide presentation. Hopefully you find it useful. If you like the video, please give a like. Please subscribe to my channel for future gaming content. Good luck for the fight in the coming hours. Bye.